Rude boy Womp, nigga, we just jumped off the porch. Rude boy Mafia with Dirty Glove. Dark side Dexter Boys. Salute. Keep capping about that work, been around your cheese. In the party with that blur, yeah, fan on me. Buzz down that auto. Alright, today we got Rude Boy Womp jumping off the porch with us today. What's the deal? Rude Boy Womp, Dexter Ave representer, Rude Boy Mafia. Let's for get show. it. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today, gang. Appreciate you for having me, my dog. No problem. So tell us, what you out here working on in Atlanta? Well, first and foremost, shit, we just uh, out here vacationing, you feel me, getting away from our normal life. Shit, I'm out here working on uh, music, basically. A couple videos, a couple little niggas I want to tap in on some beats. A couple uh, dope-ass videographers out here. I'm trying to just, you know, mix and mingle. For sure. So for those who don't know, how would you describe life back at home in Detroit? Ratchet as fuck. Shit, everybody turned up, shit, on the block to about four in the morning. Shit, we stole that from the A, you feel me? We up, we up, we up to five, six in the morning now. Everybody turned, shit, last summer about what's about the turns as I ever seen. Everybody yeah. up off PUA, PPP loans and shit. Niggas out to seven in the morning, getting smoked, bitches getting fucked in the back seat. Shit, it's ratchet, man. It's what everything, everything y'all heard. For real, for real. That sound like a good time, guys. Hell yeah, yeah, it's the new Freak Nick. <laughs> yeah, I was just finna say niggas sound like Freak Nick back in Detroit. Fact. So what part of the city are you from? I'm from the west side, Dexter Ave, dark side. And how does that side differ from the rest of the city of Detroit? Just feel like, man, we in our own lane, you feel me? We don't like nobody, they don't like us and shit. Niggas know that, niggas know. Like, shit, like that. don't fuck with them niggas. <laughs> so how would you describe your childhood coming up? Coming up, that shit was a uh, learning experience. Every motherfucking way you turn, learning experience. Shit, learning the, the, the what nots, the what to do and what nots and shit. Like far as like, you learn very early like who a killer and who a snitch. You learn that shit early. And I just feel like that shit was pivotal in my come up because I had to choose a side. Shit, you feel me? I ain't, I ain't grow up learning. learning um, who I wanted to be like, I learned what the fuck not to be like, you feel me? That's kind of what I just based my motherfucking come up off of. Straight up. So when would you say you jumped off the porch? Shit, man, I've been off the porch. Shit, it depends on what you talking about. It was, it was shit, different levels for different jumping off the porch and the shit. What my you talking about? My boy said it's different porches. Huh? My boy said it's different porches. Hell yeah, different porches for sure. Basically what I'm saying, like, when would you say you got out there and experienced life on your own? Oh shit, I'ma say uh ninth grade. Shit, eighth grade, shit, nigga had a motherfucking uh uh summer summer job and shit. And bought my own clothes to go back to school in ninth grade and shit. I never wanted nobody else to do shit for me when I did that. You feel me? It was just like, all right nigga, let's get it. Yeah. Hell yeah. So ever since then. I, I ever home. I bought myself more than my mama ever bought me, you feel me, before the eighth grade. When I, I mean eighth grade, up until the up until the ninth grade. My mom used to purchase everything for me. Ninth grade, I bought myself more than anything my mama ever bought me. You feel me? It just shit, just shit just felt different, felt good. So I'm like, I gotta do this shit myself. The hustle was awakened. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what would you say is the biggest life lesson you learned so far? Biggest life lesson I learned? Uh, everybody ain't your motherfucking friend. You feel me? Them motherfucking smiles don't be matching them handshakes. You feel me? You disappear, you go have to sit down, you hear all kind of conversation about you that you ain't even. You feel me? You know you only turn a certain certain crowd of individuals and your motherfucking business get put out there. It's kinda how you like, ah, you feel me? I know who I told this too. So basically everybody ain't your friend shit. Everything business and shit. At the end of the day, ain't no friends in this rap shit. Shit like that. Straight up. What would you say is the biggest obstacle you had to overcome so far in life? Biggest obstacles. Shit, man. I'm still going through that shit, so. Biggest obstacle is just basically staying free. Every time a nigga get, get going, some, some setbacks and shit happen. So that's the biggest obstacle. Dodging a motherfucking law. That's it. So when would you say you started making music? I started making music when I was about six years old. Me and a uh, mental ill student. Me and a mental ill kid. He was, he was like fucked up. Like he couldn't talk or do nothing. But you put a song on and he can rap that bitch. And he can play the beat. He was about 14, I was about six, seven. 
And my mama used to uh, drop me off to his mama. She used to watch me. Me and him used to be cooking up. <laughs> you feel me? I understood him on a different kind of level. You yeah. feel me? That shit kind of touched me in a way to, I always think about him and shit. I don't know what he's doing right now, but he was mentally ill, but he was a musically genius, bro. Yeah. She was crazy. That shit fire. Hell yeah. So what motivated you to start making music yourself? Uh, hearing myself. I liked my voice. Shit, I just listen to niggas like Pac, niggas like uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Pac for the real shit, Bone Thugs for the style and the melody. So when would you say you started taking music serious full time? Taking it serious when I came home in 2018, taking it serious, yup. Because it was, let me see that lighter. Because it was like, before then, we was rapping, but we ain't understand the business. You feel me? There's money to be made in this shit. It ain't all about just spin, spin, spin at a certain point. You feel me? You, you get in the game, you learn what you know, and you take that shit and you learn from your mistakes, you feel me? So basically, I'm gonna say 2018 when I came home, I started investing my money. That's real. So how did the group Rude Boy Mafia form and come together? Mm. That's a good question. That's a good ass question. It was like one day, we was in the studio, young nigga playing around. I got a text from a bitch. She like, you see me texting you? Nigga, you rude as fuck. <laughs> I'm like, damn, nobody ever called me rude, you feel me? And I'm looking around, I'm like, these niggas with me is rude as fuck. Who he is, who he is, you feel me? And we, and how, we how we came together, like, these ain't none of my friends. Like, these niggas is like my brothers, so. We do this shit like, we treat this shit like the mafia. I ain't no motherfucking disloyalty with this shit, so it was rude boy mafia when I just, shit just came off a song and the, and the text. That's crazy. I bet she looking at y'all today like, damn. Uh, 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 I don't even know who the fuck she was. Yeah. I fucked so many bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. So how did you get your individual rap name? Uh, man, I had like 10 names. I had go no cap. I had like 10 names. I always had 10 names because I used to do so much shit. I had, I had tail womp, cyber tail when we used to play basketball. I used to hit niggas with the, with the hezzy. It was just, a, I had a lot of names. But rude boy womp shit, rude boys. I'm rude, we is rude boy. That's the rude boy part, Womp. It's like an acronym. My nigga Coop, he finna come home. He did 14, choking the nigga out, killed the nigga. He finna come home. He just always call me Womp when he wants some shit. <laughs> like, come on, Womp, let me get, let me get, come on, Womp, and it was just stuck. I just made her an acronym, acronym. Working hard, overpowers my pain, you feel me? That's real. You know, my son named Lil Womp, he a baby me. That's hard. How important is fatherhood to you? Say one more time, fatherhood? Yeah. Oh man, that shit, that shit saved my life. That shit saved my life. Fatherhood is very important. Fatherhood, this is my blood brother right here. Fatherhood, we ain't had no motherfucking pops. So fatherhood was everything to me because I wanted to be to my kids what we ain't had type shit, you feel me? Like, especially like, far as being there every step of the way, teaching him how to make a left when he don't know which way to make, you feel me? He don't know, teaching him how to tie his shoes and all that shit, you feel me? Them conversations, like, nigga, take a condom with you, you feel me? Like, you feel me? We had to go through some bullshit not having the pops, getting our dick burnt off by little bitches and shit, and we ain't know. We fucking hoes raw, and we just <laughs> tripping. <laughs> Hell yeah, being, that, being able to survive, for sure. Being able to teach them how to stack money, you feel me? Because a lot of motherfuckers know how to make money. But managing that shit, that shit, you feel me? You gotta, you gotta, it's, you gotta be a different breed. And we weren't taught that shit. Nah, for real. That bitch ain't working. So what do you feel like brings the best out of you and your music? Real life situations, detrimental shit that happened to a nigga for real. You give me something to talk about in the booth, you feel me? That's why motherfuckers probably would listen to my music and won't understand what lane I'm in. Like, I'm talking about shit I'm going through on a daily, so I might have a good day and I might have a bad day. I might have a fucked up day, I might have a great day. I might shit plan a trip to the DR and wake up to an awesome ass view and want to sing about that shit. You feel me? So my shit varies. I feel that. How would you describe your current thoughts on the rap game? Okay, my current thoughts. 
shit, basically when I was a kid, seeing that shit, just, just seeing how it could turn you and your family up, my thoughts on it, uh, it ain't, it ain't what it seemed to be, you feel me? It ain't, uh, it ain't easy as I thought it was. Uh, I know it takes money to make money. So shit, basically that's it. Uh, just get in your bag, get you some loyal niggas that's gonna rock with you regardless. So my thoughts on it is shit, it's me, so shit, I am rap. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest risk you took for your career that paid off? That paid out? That paid off. Sticking with this shit. Shit, knowing that I can go harder, hearing myself, being critiqued, judging myself, being very judgmental on myself. Hell yeah, all the way down to the videographer, to the to the him not getting my shoes, nigga. I'm I'm very precise on shit like that, like nigga. Strategic. Strategic as fuck. Hell yeah. It's chess that. with all this shit. I feel that. Even coming to see y'all was a chess move. I knew y'all niggas for how long? About four or five years. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. We been tapped in. For sure. So with Detroit being like one of the hottest music scenes right now, how would you describe the impact on the music scene and the culture y'all got in Detroit right now? I mean, shit, that bitch turned. As you know, that bitch turned. You feel me? I just feel like niggas is turned. I feel like the niggas don't get that credit that deserve that credit, but I ain't here to do none of that. But that bitch turned, for sure. East and West. What was y'all like? reaction once y'all seen the impact started hitting Detroit and Michigan, all throughout Michigan, like, as a whole. It like, wasn't really shocking things. because it wasn't shocking. Because we ride around listening to our own shit all day. We know we, we dope as fuck, you feel me? It was just the, the, the politics and shit not letting niggas in the dope. But we already know we dope as fuck. When T. Grizzly dropped that shit, we been knew, like, rap was up. We been knew that shit. That's hard. So outside of music, you also are an author. Author, hell yeah. Talk to us about your book, Live Fast, Die Young. That's crazy, man. I, uh, I had a song called Live Fast, Die Young. I ain't really put it out, I just put it out for me. It was just a couple situations that I feel like an untold story, so I just rapped about it. Like I said, I had to go sit down for 10 months. Sat down for 10 months and I just wasn't getting bored. I wasn't gonna let myself get bored. I worked on my body in that bitch, worked on my raps critiquing myself in that bitch, and I was reading a lot. When I was reading a lot, that motherfucking book came to my head, that, that song came to my head. The song came to my head. Live fast, die young. I'm like, man, I'm about to write this motherfucking book. Me reading books taught me how to present myself to an audience, present myself to a reader, so. I started writing a book and shit. And this was coming together fast as hell. I'm like, damn, this shit really easy. Chapter after chapter, I'm getting deeper, deeper into it. I started January 1st, 2017. I told myself, like my New Year's resolution, I'm gonna finish this bitch. You feel me? I'm gonna fuck niggas up, I'm gonna finish this bitch. Finished it. January 31st, I'm on my bunk. Finished that bitch, I let my bunkie read it. He up all night, you feel me? I hear him. He like, he tapping the bitch, nigga, you shooting this bitch a dog, you feel me? <laughs> I finished that bitch, I let a couple old heads read it. Shit, came home, I had so much motherfucking plans for myself, me and my niggas, I had plans, like, like that time wasn't wasted, you feel me? You can trap yeah. a nigga body, but you can't trap that nigga mind, you feel me? Yeah. That time wasn't wasted. So, put that bitch together, got with the right people when I got out, we put it out, did a book signing, you already know. Satan come knocking, boom, COVID. I can't really present it how I want to present it. I saw I put it online, it went up, you feel me, went up. Amazon, that bitch went up, everybody tapping in with me. I sent some to my little brother that's locked up, he finna come home, free bro bro. I sent, sent him a couple in there, <clears throat> that bitch going up. So you already know that shit, part two coming. I got a lot of people mad at me because I, I, how I left off, I left them thinking and shit. Yeah. Part two coming, movie coming. Yeah, hey, we working, bro. We down here just networking, man. That's fire. Hell yeah. Talk about your crib catching on fire after shortly after the book was released. Twenty motherfucking uh, twenty. What was that? Twenty uh, twenty twenty. Hell yeah. Right after COVID, crib caught on fire, man. I was I was chilling. Me and my, me and my baby mama, we was chilling. I get a call, like your crib on fire. I just shoot out the crib. Boom. 
I get over there, nigga, my shit in flames. I'm thinking about everything that I got in that bitch. And it, the flame started from the top. So it burnt up everything I had stored in the attic. I ain't had no motherfucking insurance and none of that. I was just, you feel me, was trying to catch up to that. You feel me? It's just, you feel me? That shit fucked me up, but it's all good. That shit made me a better motherfucking artist when it comes to rapping about pain, singing about pain. You feel me? It brought a different side of me. I was around this nigga for so long and he, he talked to us on some regular shit. We were regular, you feel me? But how the fuck you change his voice to that? That shit, that shit pain, you feel me? You can hear it in the, in the delivery and the motherfucking vocals and all that shit. So he was a big influence with that. This 3D, the Hood King, by the way. Straight up. Hell yeah. Because once after you make it out them trials, you go shoot videos in the Dominican Republic for trenches, right? Yeah, that's crazy though. That's, that's, that shit crazy because I'm American, bro, you feel yeah. me? I'm a black nigga, I'm from the hood. You expect your peoples to embrace you more. I go out of there, I go out of the DR, shoot a video, and they and they love hometown. What was I at? Uh, Susoa, I shoot a video over there. Right after I got off, right off, right after I got off papers, I shot that shot over there. Shot a video over there, went up. That bitch hit like 40K in like two, three days. I'm like, 40K, I ain't never did those kind of numbers, you feel me? I got my little core fan base, but it's about, a thousand, probably people, you feel me? 40K, like that shit is crazy to me. They was embracing a nigga. Went back over there again, just gave out t-shirts and shit. Embracing me more, now I'm dealing with artists. I'm about to sign an artist over there and everything. I'm really finna take my talent to the DR, you feel me? They, they, they show a nigga crazy love. That's Even right. though the D hot right now, it's still niggas who gon' blackball you and not really get you in that bitch like they know they could. So you feel me? I feel like that's a different lane for me. So I'm very, very thinking about going to the DR and doing some shit. That's real. They know Chico Rudo over there. Ask <laughs> <laughs> about Chico Rudo. We come to play, baby. <laughs> How did you end up working with Ice Wear Vezo for Free Kill? Uh, it was just basically a uh, song in the studio. We've been seeing each other around and shit, the conversation. Kind of shit, what's up? I don't know you from somewhere. I think I've been around you a million times, nigga. What's up? Let's do a song. Shit, let's do it. We paid that fee and shit, we knocked it out. For sure. Same thing with Sada Baby? Sada Baby, really, my man, uh, Wood on the Beat. He plugged me with Sada, baby. I ain't really know a dog. I just knew Sada was a star before anybody really was, was hit. So I'm like, fuck it, man. I need a song with this nigga. We'll put it together. We knocked that bitch out. He surprised the fuck out. We came in that bitch. No, pay, no pen, no pad. Knocked that bitch out. I looked at bro like, man, this nigga, what the fuck? The fuck? <laughs> this nigga do this shit. But yeah, hell yeah. It's like, I, I got a good eye and good ear for music, you feel me? I know good niggas, good artists, you feel me? That's why I aim for them. I don't be on no clout chasing shit, none of that shit. I just fuck with niggas for their artistry, you feel me? Straight up. Hell yeah. Talk to us about the inspiration behind your single, The Hive. The Hive, man. I'ma keep it funky. My motherfucking videographer pissed me off, man. So I had to go shoot some shit because I had a whole motherfucking tape that's supposed to have been presented in the summer with video. So I had to go get in my bag real quick and go shoot some shit. So. My nigga, uh, Paulie Marley, he always come through on the beach. Shout out Paulie Marley, go look him up. He from the D, HP, Holland Park. My nigga Paulie Marley always sending me shit. And I actually just been hanging out in the high since I came back from Miami doing all that work, just relaxing. This is after hour. I, I believe they stole the idea from the line of niggas, but that bitch go up, four, five in the morning, we in that bitch late nights, just kicking back, fucking with hoes, getting blowed. <laughs> And the, the name of the song is The Hive. Shit, y'all gotta yeah. go listen to that bitch and shit. Come to the D and she fuck with our after hours and shit. Straight up. Hell yeah. That's so, the motivation behind it, The Hive, though. Just being in that bitch so much. That's the real one. Hell yeah. Shout out my sister Cash Dow. <laughs> she uh dropped, dropped me a drop on that bitch. She heard I'm back working again. And she dropped me a drop on that bitch. Hell yeah. Went That's up. Love. That bitch hit what about? 2000, this first day, that was good for me. See, I don't even be watching the numbers, just be niggas telling me like, bro, that bitch moving, doing this, that, and the third. I'm like, you feel me? I ain't never satisfied. I'm always, I don't celebrate no kind of win. I'm always on to the next, like, yeah. you feel me? I'm like, all right, let that bitch do what it do. You feel me? I believe it's all in God's hands. We gonna, just gonna do what it do. What we doing next, you feel me? Straight up. So what can you tell us about your recent EP, Been Ballin'? Been Ballin'? Uh, shit, man. What can I say about Ben Ballin? I'm gonna take y'all deep into Ben Ballin. Ben Ballin, man, I feel like ever since ninth grade, since I've been taking care of myself, nigga, Ben Ballin. 
even from basketball, nigga been balling. Football, nigga just been balling. Living, been balling. My kids, I just been balling. You feel me? So I just said been balling on that bitch. It's basically, I just hit another motherfucking level in life one day. And shit, I just wanted to talk about the shit I been doing mixed with the shit I'm doing now and shit. Been balling. Show for sure. I got songs on there like uh, PPP Long. And that shit right there, that shit speaks for itself. We ain't got that though. We, we legal. We been balling legally lately, you feel me? Ever since a nigga went off post papers and shit. What would you say is your personal favorite song from the project? From Ben Ballin? Yeah. Uh, PPP Long, or part of the uh, intro, Ben Ballin. But that's just lifestyle. Ben Ballin, man. Like, when it comes to gear, <laughs> motherfucking. We love that kind of shit, gear. RP my nigga Ray Ski, man. He really the first nigga taught me how to dress. Gear, motherfucking jewelry, culture. It's just like Cartier's and shit. Like everybody just getting hip to that shit. Like we really been doing this shit since like eighth, ninth grade. Been balling. Like nigga, them bitches was five hundred dollars for a pair of woods. Now them bitches thirty two hundred. Like we 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 got shit in the archive from back then. Like yeah. <laughs> we been balling. Like straight up. For real, for real. So what can we expect from your forthcoming project? My forthcoming. Uh, I got one from the drop of my nigga Ray Ski birthday. Like I say, that nigga taught me how to dress. He was just an old school cat that I grew up with, but he was our age, you feel me? To the point where the nigga was so motherfucking real, bro. We had a motherfucking uh, shootout and, a, and we, we beat some niggas up back in the day. And he with us every day. He stepping with us. And we leave a bar and nigga say, bro, I ain't with this shit. On some trailing boys in the hood shit. Bro, I ain't with this shit. If I get caught, nigga, I ain't going to jail for nobody. He let me out on the freeway. He let this nigga out. <laughs> <laughs> but I respect the nigga for being real, dog. Cause don't ride with me, don't step with me if you're gonna tell on me at the end of the day. You nigga, you knew what you signed up for. And he was just a different nigga, bro. You feel me? We was gangsters, bro. He was never claiming to be that. He mobbed with us. He just was never no gangster. And I just respected him for being him. So the name of the tape is Ghost of Ray Ski. Like I say, the nigga, man, you get fresh, nigga. He just one day, is, I called to check on the nigga, and the mama was like, shit, uh, son, he right here dead, look at me in my eyes. I said, what the fuck? You feel me? Nigga just died. Not no COVID and no shit like that. And that's when shit got real to me. Like, dog, nigga can just die, bro, if you don't know what's going on with your health. You can just die, nigga. Yeah. Not on no, no street shit. Like, we done made it out of so much shit. Like I, like I can mention, like, I can remember about 10 times I could have got killed. All the way back from motherfucking my first case, eighth grade, nigga. Not killed, but I could have did life, nigga. I could have got sentenced to life as a kid, nigga. We beat a nigga ass so motherfucking bad. R.I.P. my man, Hell Real. He hop out the motherfucking. Well, his birthday was just yesterday. R.I.P. Hell Real, man. Real Tober. But yeah, we hop. He hop out. We beat a nigga ass. It was an ex bitch I was fucking with, eighth grade. She mad. I cut her off. She tell her cousin I did some bullshit to her, which I never did. He come up there on this tough man shit. Come on, man, we the craziest little niggas around this bitch. You come up here on what? We beat this nigga ass so bad, we ain't need help. But my man, older brother, you feel me? Dexter Almighty, we don't like nobody. He hop out that bitch with a hammer. Boom, bang him in his head a couple times. Boom, boom, hammer, you feel me? Could've closed this nigga curtains. So we go back to school, mind, mind you, eighth grade. We go back to school, we ain't thinking shit of it. I let an older nigga wear my shoes. They was from Air Force Ones, baby blue and white, never forget. Nigga left some stones in my shit. Nigga name, I ain't even say nigga name. But nigga left some stones in my shit, like in a, in a, in a folded part of the Air Ones. I, and I peep it in the motherfucking lunchroom. This nigga left some stones in my shit, you feel me? I'm about to sell these bitches, give me about $10. <laughs> I'm sure my man and shit. About 30 seconds later, somebody come tap me on my shoulder. It's the principal and the security guard. I'm like, what the fuck? They done caught me set of stones. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, they walked me in there, nigga. I got two of my other homeboys in there who was a part of the fight. They're like, yeah, man, we got y'all on camera. Damn, they're killing him, man. He haven't woke up yet. Like, shit. Come on, go on and walk with him. So we go get lined up. Mind you, this shit ain't, ain't real to me yet. I still ain't thinking this shit real for real. One of my niggas I looked up to, my nigga too. <laughs> This niggas in that bitch crying, bro. <laughs> it's great. I still don't think it's real. He crying. 
But I ain't touched the little boy. He cried. I was like, bro, what's wrong, bro? He like, man, I wasn't there. Tell him I wasn't there. I like, he wasn't at school. He wasn't there that day, man. It was just, you feel me, me and him. We took, we stood up for our shit. We took our shit. Still locking my man up and shit. So, but yeah, man, we was doing that shit since young. High school. Like I said, I could have got killed this time. I'm out there framed up, 11th grade. Like when I say framed up, I mean I'm out there buffed up. No, we ain't, I ain't had no buffs. I had some woods there. I'm out there wooded up. Yeah, little nigga, I got it from this nigga. Right here, he sold me my first pair of woods for my, how much? A motherfucking uh, half an ounce. A hundred and a half an ounce. The bitch is about 3,200 right now. <laughs> but yeah, bro, he sold me my first woods. I'm out there, big 55 zone, you feel me? We thugging, nigga, Dexter boys. Some niggas we was beefing with, the zones and shit. One of them people, one of they peoples, kind of like, was an older nigga, you could tell, but he kind of tried to flex his muscle on us. Mind you, we never been on hoes. Northwestern, nigga, it's set. The high school we went to, set in the zone. So you feel me? He come up there, masked up. Mind you, we ain't thinking nothing of it, nigga. We ain't never been on hoes, what's up? He pull out on me and my man, Bud Love, pull the strap out. Nigga, give, him, give me them glasses, nigga. Say that Dexter shit now. Nah. I'm like, nigga, fuck you, nigga. Put my shit off, nigga. You gotta, you gotta blow me in front of this bitch. If you don't even feel me, you want these bitches. Ooh, I take off on them. I'm gone, you feel me? Mind you, this is the baggy pants era. And I'm running, sagging and shit. I run and I fall, I trip. Mind you, the homeboys with me. We thugs, but we ain't strapped this day. They get the fuck on like shit. I don't know what's going on. You feel me? I'm protecting my motherfucking frames. You ain't about to get my fucking frames, nigga. That's like a chain. You yeah. get a nigga chain to it, ain't no coming back from that. Yeah. You ain't about to take my motherfucking frames. So I'm running. Mm. I fall, man. He picked me up. You stupid ass nigga. He banged me in my forehead with that bitch. Split my motherfucking forehead. You feel me? And took off. Man, I came back to school the next day thinking I'm Tupac, nigga. I'm thugging in that bitch. Like, where them niggas at? You feel me? But that was just a dumb ass shit I wouldn't recommend my son to do. Man, pass them whole ass glass, get them bitches up, you feel yeah. me? But it was a learning experience. I just think back like, man, they could have blew me in the back of my motherfucking head for, for some, some friends I spent the motherfucking half an ounce and a hundred dollars for. <laughs> you feel me? But that shit was serious with us, man. We was the nigga, we was the robbers, you feel me? Ain't nobody taking shit from us. For real. Straight up. So what else are you working on right now? Uh, what I'm working on? I'm working on gangland. You feel me? My little brother finna come on me heavy into the culture. Yeah, uh, I got, I, that bitch gonna be heat. I'm working on uh, new music with my brother. My brothers uh, don't want her back. It's kind of like an old song, but we putting it back out because that bitch is that relevant. That bitch heat. My nigga, uh, I'm working with my people, my camp, my nigga D right here. He just shot a video for his project. That bitch going up in the hood. I'm just staying active, man. I might go do a song and do a video and drop a single tomorrow. So I'm feeling, you feel me? I just, that ain't no motherfucking calendar dates. We just write in on this shit. We just, it's a lifestyle. We wake up and do this shit. Straight up. Hell yeah. Any last words and shout outs? Hell yeah, man. I feel like shit. Shout out to the whole Detroit. Working, staying active. Shit, I'm gonna go crazy. Fuck with some uh, producers here. Shit, shout out to the whole D, though. That's all I wanna shout out, man. Dexter Al, Dark Side, we really do this shit, nigga. This ain't no six on this chain either, nigga. It's your Dexter, Dark Side, for sure, for sure. All the way to the light side. Some fake ass niggas on the light side too, but yeah, Dark Side shit. Dang. He keep capping about that work, been around your cheese. In the party with that blur, yeah, fan on me. Bust down that auto mark, got my hand on freeze. Bust.